Hey Tech Nedwit family, we have an awesome video lined up for you tonight. We are bringing you the TE-01 1165T and this thing is a bad mamma jamma of a HP. It's not the best computer you can buy, but it's definitely one that's upgradable. I will be putting a 2060 Super in here. I'll be putting a bunch of graphics cards, PSUs in here. I'll be putting memory. This thing is upgradable. If you want to see more and see the unboxing, go ahead and watch the rest of the video, y'all. And we're going to pop this bad mamma jamma open. This is the TE-01 1165 Tango. Um, this does come with Windows 10 Home, and it's an i5-10-400 uh, that is a 2.9 gigahertz base frequency, and it boosts up to 4.3. There's 12 megabytes of L3 catch, and uh, so on. This has got a 1650 uh, GTX with 4 gigabytes of GDR5 dedicated memory. Uh, it's a pretty cool PC, I want to say. Uh, the memory is also 8 gigabytes, but it's supposedly two 4x 8 gigabytes. So HP is going to surprise me. They're actually going to put dual channel RAM in here. I am ecstatic, guys. I am so ecstatic. Yes, it's an NV. It's a pretty cool PC. Um, this thing does support an NVMe 256 gigabyte PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD. There is a spinny spin disk in here as well, a one terabyte 7200 RPM. Uh, spinny disk uh, 3.5 we do got a wireless keyboard and mouse we just decided to take the venture and see how it worked out and if it was anything worth the while it was only a $20 uh, added cost so we decided to do it so this is what you get in this box it's a uh, well wrapped and boxed nicely you're gonna have a, a power cable which is the only cable that comes with this PC so if you see me hook up other cables they are not included Sometimes it comes with screws, sometimes it doesn't. This time it, it came with screws. I cannot guarantee if you order this PC, it will come with extra hard drive and M.2 screws. So just be aware that it's like a 50-50 maybe thing, just like the dual channel RAM. You order this thing, it, it's a 50-50 chance that you actually get it. Other than that, this does have a 10-1000 uh, gigabit NIC in it. It's perfectly fine for gaming. I wouldn't say to use the Wi-Fi for gaming it's asking for trouble. It's not that you can't do it, but you're not gonna want to. This is the Nightfall Black Edition, and it's a pretty slick looking case. So let's get this bad mamma jamma out of the box. Uh, of course, if it wants to work with me because, you know, it's tight in here. Uh, the one nice thing, guys, I'm gonna do the full Monty on this PC. You are gonna see me do everything with it. I'm gonna stick big graphics cards in her and oh my gosh holy crap they said hey let's uh, send a reviewer a computer that we can't get out of the box yes I am fighting don't need that don't need that all right there is our TE this thing is going to be very similar to your TG and other MEs that are out there, along with the 690. So let's get her unwrapped and see what's under the skirt. So if we come up front, we do have a memory card reader right here, an SD card reader, a USB-C that's five gigabits per second. It's not the 10, but it's five. And we have four USB 3.2 wonderfulness. They're also five gigabytes per second. We got a headphones jack and our power jack. It does support a DVD writer in the front. If you're gonna be upgrading the drives, I would say just toss that away because it's the way of the dinosaurs. Unless you're still living off of DVD music and you're burning your own MP3 CDs, then it might be a use to you. Uh, let's come around the rear with the gear and we have three headphone jack ports up here. These ports right here are not usable. Uh, the ones that I'm showing right here, these are not usable. You cannot use these ports, so don't take them apart, leave them alone. You have your wonderful NVIDIA 1650 that will do enough gaming to be very happy. And if you want to run stuff on higher settings, you're going to want to upgrade that graphics card. This thing does come with a 400 watt platinum power supply that will support up to a 2060 Super or a 3060 Ti. The memory in this guy is upgradable to 32 gigabytes. All right, guys, that's an overview of this PC. I'm going to pop the side off to show you the inside and then we'll go from there. Hey guys, I'm just going to get right into this. I got everything unboxed and I want to show you a couple things really quick. Um, the other M.2 slot in here is for little cards only. It will not take a second M.2 hard drive. 
Real quick about this wireless keyboard and mouse. I'm gonna get into the unbox really quick and show you what is in here. I'm gonna say that you might not wanna use this for gaming because of latency, but you can you know, you know, use it at your own risk. There's a little dongle in here that you need to pull out and this needs to come to the rear with the gear and it needs to go into one of these slots back here. Put it in one that's not in our way and that will communicate. With the wireless keyboard and mouse, you are gonna get two sets of batteries a mouse and a keyboard. I will set this up offset and uh, have this rocking and rolling for you, but this is pretty much it. I guess I can take the keyboard and mouse out and put the batteries in it for you guys. Might as well. Ooh, this keyboard's kind of heavy. Holy. It's actually kind of a hefty keyboard. I was not expecting that. Uh, the HP's uh, up in their game here, guys. So go ahead and uh, get your two AAAs. Both the uh, positive end is going to go towards the, if you're looking at the keyboard, it's going to be going towards the right side of the HP writing. Of course, TechNet would, if you put the batteries in proper, properly, it will work. And then get your back back on. Don't know if there's an on and off switch on here. I do not see one. So it might be on all the time. Or it might be auto sensing, you know, you tap the key and it comes on. Uh, of course, our mouse. All right, guys, so you pull this tab off right here. The whole top of the mouse comes off. And then we uh, go ahead and put both our batteries in here. It does come with a spot for this little dongle to fit in. So if you want to take this keyboard and mouse with you, you have a laptop or anything like that, it will come with you. Both. Batteries are going to be facing towards the front of the mouse, so the wheel right here, and that should be the batteries installed. Go ahead and put the front of the or back of the mouse in, and then goes front. And let's go ahead and turn her on. And we can see we get a little light here. It's white. It shows us that we have power. Of course, I would not suggest running the wireless keyboard and mouse if you plan on gaming. Uh, one thing while TechNib would try to figure out these batteries, guys. All HPs usually use a T15 Torx head. This is what's gonna take this side panel off. I am gonna go inside here and measure to show you how, uh, how long you have to put a graphics card in. It does come with an M.2 screw, which is kinda neat. And everything that's here is what you're gonna need. If your monitor didn't come with an HDMI cable, you might have to purchase one. All right guys, so first I'm gonna pop the side of the case off, show you guys what's inside. And you're gonna come to the rear right here, and there's a T5 Torx head right here. Go ahead and undo her. She's gonna come loose like that. And then you're gonna pull straight back with the case. The bottom might get kind of stuck, so you might have to assist. There we go, that's our side panel off. Let's see if uh, HP gave us two dims of memory. Yes, they did. Thank you, HP, for supporting dual channel awesomeness. One thing I do see that's gonna be in the way if you wanna run a full-size graphics card is this hard drive is not gonna be able to go here. So we are going to have to relocate that. I will figure something out for you. Um, if not, it might have to be removed. You'll have to see when we do the video on the graphics card upgrade. Um, other than that, this bad mamma jamma of a TV, TG Envy will fit, it looks like 10 inches and a half. That's going to be your graphics card. So if you see this lip, that brings us to about 10 inches, but really we could probably do 10 and a half. Of course, with the hard drive in here, you got even less space. You're looking at not even 10 inches. You're looking at nine inches and three, uh, nine and three quarters inches of space. So you're gonna wanna sacrifice the hard drive to get a graphics card in there. Let's, let's be real here. We want a game. We don't really care about uh, spinny disks. Unless you're kind of doing this on the cheap, then you might need to relocate that disk somewhere else. All right, guys, something I wasn't gonna do, but I'm gonna do it anyways. First thing you're going to come and do, tuck it if you can speak, is pull these two cables off right here. They're kind of hard to get off. You feel like you're going to break them. And then you know, that's your SATA and your power. Then you're going to go ahead and hit this green latch. Pop this door open. It's kind of hard. you got to kind of wiggle it. And this drive is going to come out through the front. Close the door up. And then we're going to grab these three tabbies right here and pull them forward. And that's the front panel off. This is what the front looks like. That's what the side looks like right now. You're gonna to come to the front right here and we have a T5 Torx head. And we're gonna remove this 
this guy. We're going to swing her around. And we got one more right here. And this is going to have a snap right here. You're going to kind of pull forward and push in. That's going to come out. There are going to be two cables that are going to be attached down here. I already have them detached. I didn't put them back. And then this is, it's, it feels really tight, but there's a snap right here. So you have to push in like that, and it comes right out and out. That's your SSD slash uh, DVD-ROM caddy. And then this is the inside. This is your M.2 disk right here. This is that little M.2 Wi-Fi card that I was talking to you guys about. Here's your extra hard drive that you're going to have to remove if you want to put a 2060 Super or a 3070 or a 3060 Ti. And that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. You can see our dual channel RAM right here. They didn't chintz us out and give us one X eight gigabyte stick. And that's everything, guys, in a nutshell. I'm going to get everything back together and pick. I'm going to pick it up with me showing you guys how to plug everything in. All right, guys, I know I said I wasn't going to put everything back together on camera. I have other videos. It's the exact same as the TG video, but I am going to show you how to put this DVD tray back in. This does not go back in here first. We need to put the front panel back on. This is going to swing like a door. This silver side is going to go to this side, and there's three catches right here. One, two, three. And if you look on here, the three catches are right here, and we are going to get those caught. So when I put this in here, you got to kind of come down and in, and you want to look. You want to make sure it gets caught so it's not, it's kind of a tricky one, but you'll feel it like it's caught on there. And then we kind of swing it like a door and it snaps forward. Pop this guy forward. The green latch on here goes down towards the bottom. And then this guy slides in and it's going to get real tight. Close your door and that's everything. I'm going to get the case and the, and the wires plugged back in, which is pretty simple for you to do. And then I'm going to get this guy plugged in, so give me a couple seconds and I'll get everything reconfigured. Alright guys, one thing I did not mention before is that you can add an SSD to this in its current configuration. So if you did remove that spindy disk, it would allow you to do an SSD. There's another blue port in there that you can get a separate cable off of Amazon or wherever and it will uh, plug right in. The other thing I do want to say is most 1650s allow three monitors. This one only allows two, so just FYI. So real quick, guys, we're going to grab power, and that's going to come down here. It's literally shaped to where you cannot plug this in wrong. Go ahead and plug power in. We have our mouse and keyboard right here, and then we're going to grab our HDMI cable and the funny side up, flat side down, and that's going to plug into our 1650 Super. And everything should be ready to go, and she should power right up. All right, guys, I like to do a full-service type of deal. So I know a lot of people know how to do their windows. Some people don't, so I'm just going to walk you through it. It is very simple. Just follow the, pelt, the prompts. Once you get everything plugged in, you get your monitor plugged in, you get your mouse and keyboard plugged in, everything should be working. And you're going to go ahead and select your country. Go ahead and select your keyboard layout, which is U.S., um, I'm just going to do skip. Go ahead and connect it to a Wi-Fi network if you have one so it can do updates. And pretty much follow the prompts from here, guys. And if you're wondering about the extra software stuff that it lets you tick off at the end, I usually tick everything off. But if you like Cortana, the ink stuff, the tracking stuff, because you like it to know your shopping habits and stuff like that, you can go ahead and click that on. You might have to make a Microsoft user account, so be aware that if you do not set up your Wi-Fi here, it might give you some problems and you have to create an online account, or sorry, you have to create an offline account. That is not under this purview of this video, but other than that, guys, we are going to get into it. One thing about uh, the ports on the 1650s uh, card. That other port you see on there, you're probably like, that's not a display port. What is it? It's a DVID. So just be aware that it's an HDMI and a DVID. You might need a converter if you're going to try doing a second monitor. Other than that, guys, we're going to pick this up right where we left off, and that's with the benchmark, and meet me there. All right, guys, once you got everything set up with Windows, we're going to come here, and we ran a benchmark with uh, Firestrike. And this is the 1080p at 30 frames per second. At least that's what I had the monitor set to for recording. And we scored a 7,850. Let's just look at some of the games here really quick. Battlefield 5 on 10, 1440p Ultra, we'd score about 30 frames per second 
plus with the 1650. Uh, Apex Legends, you're looking at 40 frames plus, and of course GTA 5, if it lets me click on it, you're looking at less than 30. Uh, Fortnite, you're looking at 30 plus, and of course Red Dead Redemption, which is the graphics card, which is a game killer, uh, not graphics card killer, game killer is less than 20. Of course, these are it's these are on ultra, so you could back the settings down. I will say that this is going to get two thumbs up of approval for gaming from Tech Nitwit. You can game with this thing, but you are going to have to back your settings down. Uh, of course, it is not going to do 1440p gaming very well. It's mostly going to be 1080p. If you do do a 1440p uh, monitor, you are going to want to upgrade the graphics card in this thing. Of course, the current uh, current events right now are don't make that so easy. But if you want to get into the game and order this thing from HP, go right ahead. Uh, you can get it from Walmart and Best Buy. They don't usually come with the graphics card, but you can find them. Uh, other than that, this is pretty much what we scored, and I do really like this thing. There are going to be some more upgrade videos. Stay tuned, y'all. Um, of course, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have any questions about this computer or other computers, throw them down in the comment section down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. This was a Tech Knit with Productions video, and thank you for watching, y'all.